On a recent episode of Muscle Car of the Week, we took some time to look at one of the coolest attributes of muscle cars, and that being the paint and the stripe and graphic treatment that some of these cars have. In fact, we came up with kind of a quick top 10 list and uh, shared that on an episode. Well, the feedback was very strong. A lot of people liked the episode, and of course, a lot of people said, hey, you forgot about X. So today, uh, we've gone back through the comments and took some notes on what people have said they really like on muscle car stripes, and we're presenting the Stripes and Smoke Special Part 2 with another 10 cool cars that we featured on Muscle Car of the Week. So plowing right ahead into number 10, this is a very cool car. It's a 1969 Mercury Cougar Eliminator, and it's finished in competition orange. And the neat thing about this car is it demonstrates that stripes don't need to be uh, super prevalent or really, really big uh, to have a nice effect on the car. This car has an orange exterior with a fairly thin black stripe that starts in the front on the fender and goes towards the back of the car, uh, ending about three quarters of the way back in the word Eliminator. And that font that's used to spell out Eliminator is kind of an all business deal. It's, uh, it's not whimsical, it's not silly. This car meant business as evidenced by the name Eliminator in the stripe. Now, this one also had a 390 under the hood, so it made lots of tire smoke and goes pretty fast as well. So that stripe just wasn't for show. This car also has some go. And you can find that 69 Cougar Eliminator in episode 110 of Muscle Car of the Week. In the number nine spot, we're finding another orange Ford product. This is a 1970 Shelby GT350, and this one is finished in grabber orange, and it's got a, uh, a very cool white stripe in the Shelby treatment that goes up the sides and over the hood. By 1970, the GT350 concept had morphed quite a bit from the basically purpose-built race car for the street into what you see here, which was a lot more luxurious, uh, a lot more feature-packed, this one is kind of doubly cool because it's also a convertible, uh, and these cars have a whole bunch of custom special fiberglass pieces to make them look different from a Mustang, and under the hood, it's got a 351 cubic inch V8, but we thought that Shelby Stripe with the GT350 moniker was definitely worthy of a spot in our second Stripe Top 10. You can see that one in episode number 107. <laughs> In the number eight slot, we're actually kind of spanning several cars. Um, it's the infamous Pontiac Firebird Trans Am Hoodbird. Now this isn't necessarily a stripe, but it is a muscular graphic that found itself on Pontiac Firebird Trans Ams. And this is kind of a love it or hate it thing. A lot of people like the earlier version of the Trans Am that didn't have the bird. And some people say, you know, without the bird, it's not really a Trans Am we found that the story behind the bird was pretty interesting. Uh, apparently, uh, in the 1970 model year when they were coming up with the graphic design of the car, one of the Pontiac designers came up with the bird uh, using the traditional racing colors of the first generation car, so the, the white and the blue, uh, but was doing a graphic instead of a stripe, but still wanted to have something that looked high performance. And Bill Mitchell, the GM styling head, hated it and said, get it off the car. So for 1970, you see a very small hood bird. It's right on the nose. But by 1973, this became a full hood graphic. And we featured a 73 and a 74, both red Trans Ams on Muscle Car of the Week. And the 1979 anniversary Trans Am, which is kind of the epitome of the hood bird with his feathers and many different colors. Yes, some people call him the screaming chicken, I think they're cool. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And you can see these in episode 23 and episode number 109 of Muscle Car of the Week. In the number seven spot, we're looking at a Dodge Daytona. This is a 1969 Dodge Daytona finished in medium blue. And this car, of course, has the legendary wing on the back and the wing and the quarter panels are wrapped in a black stripe. 
And one of the things that's interesting about this car is, of course, this was the car that was built for the NASCAR Super Speedways, so it's got the nose cone and the big wing, but the stripe really doesn't go longitudinally up the car, it goes around the tail, and in this case, up over the wing. Uh, Dodge had what they called the Bumblebee stripe, uh, Plymouth had one around the tail as well, and I thought it was cool that in order to accommodate the wing, they just made the stripe go the whole way. And right in the middle of that stripe, it says Daytona in a very kind of unassuming type style. So it's not a stripe that looks super fast, but as you recall, the reason why these cars have stripes in the first place were to make them identifiable from the grandstands as the car went around the track. So maybe an all blue car with a big black stripe around the tail was easy to see. I would think any Daytona is easy to see. And you can see this one in episode number 166 of Muscle Car of the Week. Next, in the number six position, we're going back to the Pontiac Trans Am, uh, but this time the first generation. And the 1969 Trans Am was cameo white, and they had some Tyrol blue stripes going from the nose up over the roof and back down over the deck lid, and of course over the wing. And they had a matching Tyrol blue tail panel. And there's a lot going on with these stripes because if you look carefully, they're not perfectly parallel and they're not in a perfect straight line. They actually follow the body contours and they get a little narrower and a little wider, but the illusion is that they're almost dead nut straight when you look at them. Another cool piece of trivia about these, the Tyrol blue is the same color code as Marina blue on a Chevrolet. So if you ever need to restore a 69 Trans Am and need to know what that color is, more paint facilities are familiar with Marina Blue than Tyrol Blue, and you can tell them it's the same thing. You'll find this car in episode number 141. In the number five slot is another grabber orange Ford, but this time it's a 1970 Boss 302. And this particular car is a race version of a Boss 302, if you saw the episode where we featured this car, you learned the story that this one was kind of used to develop the over-the-counter parts program so people could build their own racing version of a Boss 302. But at any rate, many people pointed out in the comments of our previous episode, the Boss 302 stripe is pretty legendary and definitely belongs in our stripe special. And of course, this has a stripe coming up the hood, and then they split and go diagonally off the fenders down the side of the car and towards the back, uh, and these also have a blacked out tail panel. Uh, the Boss 302 stripe has lived on from the original car in various formats, all the way up to Mustangs to today. And that's why it's so familiar and why so many people like it. You can see this race car in episode number 173. In our number four slot, we've got a Dodge Super B, and this car is bright yellow with a white bumblebee tail stripe around the back. And what's cool about this one is right in the middle of the stripe is a graphic of the Super B himself. And the story of the Super B is told in the episode where we featured this particular car, which was episode number 21 of Muscle Car of the Week. The short version is, this is a Mopar B body platform, and they hopped it up with a 440 in this case, so they call it the Super B. And the B is wearing kind of his oblong glasses, as you can see on the uh, hood emblem. Those glasses are designed to mimic the grill openings, but all of that is mirrored in that stripe design. And we think the yellow with the white interior and that white stripe really stands out. So we added it to the number four position of our stripe special. In the number three slot is a stripe that everybody knows, but everybody seems to like. 1969 Camaro with the hockey stripe, which uh, either starts at the bottom of the front fender, goes up and back, or some people think starts on the door and goes forward and down. Uh, in this case, we've got a blue car with a black stripe. These were offered in many different color combinations. And today we call these the hockey stripe because it kind of looks like a hockey stick. And a neat piece of trivia is that originally, the stripe was painted on the fender, but from the door seam back was actually tape, so it wasn't painted all the way through. This 69 Camaro can be found in episode number 112. 
And in the number two position is a very cool car. It's a 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner with a 426 Hemi under the hood. And this car has graphic details all over it, but the biggest standout is the over the roof strobe stripe. So if you recall, in 1970, you could get an AAR Cuda with a strobe stripe up the side. In this case, they moved that stripe to start on the quarter panel, go up the sail panel and over the roof and back down the other side. But not only is the design intense with the little slats, but this is also a reflective stripe on this car. So I can only imagine what it looked like at night with this black car that you couldn't see and that strobe stripe lighting up in the reflection of oncoming headlights. Uh, this car also has other cool details like an air grabber scoop and the afterburner style exhaust tips, but that strobe stripe really makes it a knockout. And you can see this car in episode number 63. And finally, in the number one slot, uh, largely by popular demand, is the 1971 Plymouth Cuda billboard stripe. Now the billboard was different from some of the other stripes available. It seems like there were a lot of stripe options available for 1971. But the billboard was unique because it blacked out almost half the car. And if you look closely, you'll see a number in that billboard. These could be had with 340 cars, 383 cars, 440 cars, or 426 Hemi cars. I guess you really wouldn't want to make a big deal if you had a 318 or a six cylinder. Uh, but if you saw a car going down the road and it had a billboard, Chances are it had any one of those four engines, meaning no matter what, it was pretty fast. In this case, we're looking at a Tawny Gold 71 Cuda convertible with a 446 barrel engine, one of a handful of these cars, and we believe the only one in this Tawny Gold with the billboards and a convertible. It's a super, super rare car. It's interesting because it's a dark colored car with a black billboard stripe, so it's not super vibrant but it's a great detail. This one also has a shaker hood scoop, which kind of puts it even farther over the top. And it takes the number one slot of our Stripe Special. You can see more of this car in episode number 19, a muscle car of the week. And we're always happy to hear your feedback, either on the YouTube channel or Facebook page, or on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com. Thanks for watching, and next time we'll bring you another super cool car from the Brothers Collection.